<laughs> is it on? No. Well, can't you see out here at all? No. The teeth are in the way. Oh, yeah, come on. No, the, the teeth completely obscure the view. No, they don't. I can see you perfectly. Yeah. Now. Hello. No. I, 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 I'm not kidding you, I can't see anything. Yes, now you've got one, two, three. three. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, I brought Terry the orca with us. You gonna say hello to Terry? Hi Terry! <laughs> so for me, I was about your age when I decided that I really wanted to study whales and dolphins and particularly orca. The photo of me as a kid was taken when I was about six years old and I had convinced my dad that I wanted to learn to snorkel and he had to build me a little swimming pool. I think I'm really lucky because I don't believe that fascination's gone away. I get a call about an orca sighting and I still get butterflies and I still get goosebumps. So when I was at university I applied to do a PhD studying the New Zealand orca because no one had ever studied them before and they gave me a year to give it a try. And what I've found is that there are fewer than 200 orca living around the whole of New Zealand. I managed to get the government to change the classification to nationally critical. So I wanted to ask you guys the question, what is an orca? Orca is a sort of dolphin. Dolphin? Yeah. It's a mammal. It's a mammal, exactly. So if somebody asks me a question about orca, I say, well, think about humans. And there's your answer. There are so many parallels between orca and humans that it's almost uncanny. When you look at the fetus of, a, of an orca before it becomes recognisable as an orca, that's almost indistinguishable from a human fetus. Human fetuses, of course, have tails. And for most humans, it's absorbed back into the body. But for the orca, they not only have a little tail, but they also have little hind limbs, and those are absorbed back into the body. But there have been a few whales and dolphins that have been found that have vestigial hind legs. They have big brains, yeah. and they're really smart. I know. And, they, and my nanny told me a story about this. Reputed to be the largest brain for its body size of any animal in the world. And uh, Dr. Laurie Marino, she has discovered that they actually have a part of the brain that we don't even have. And she believes that that's linked to uh, their empathy and their compassion. And yeah. guess what? Yes. Um, Coming, I'll come a, next. If you see an orca or a whale or a dolphin on the beach, you should help it get back to the sea. And call the orca hotline, right? <laughs> Hello, Orca Hotline, Ingrid speaking. So the first orca stranding that I went to was a young male orca who's now known as Ben. And he'd got caught in surf pretty much just like this. In some instances, they're traveling into a harbor going over a shallow sandbank. In other instances, it's an individual that just happens to be chasing a ray and makes a mistake. I've got some photographs of one orca who's stranded who's got these incredible bite marks across her back and that was because um, the orca were trying to pull her off the sandbank. Ben had his pectoral fins stuck in the sand. So we dug out one side and we made this hollow area for it to hang down. As soon as it hung down you could just hear him go, oh, from the relief of the pressure off the shoulder blade. And then we walked around the front of him to start digging on the other side. And he physically put more weight on the side that we just dug out and lifted the other one up so that we could dig quickly underneath. So they're very aware of what's going on. They really seem to respond to the fact that we're trying to help them. He was very calm and he just was just waiting for the tide to come back in. And then uh, he just gently swum off and then he started calling for the other orca that he knew were in the harbour. And he and the other orca, they headed out of the harbour. We did it! Yay! So, this is 
that's where he stranded and then we followed him all the way up there, you can see his track. <laughs> He's going that way, we're going home. Six Walker Research, do you copy? And if you look at the teeth, they fit together like a zipper. Um, they won't be if they had sharp teeth, they might go through you and you might but die. A lot of people think that orca teeth must be razor sharp, but in fact they're not. They're, they're very similar, in fact, to a dog's teeth. Much bigger, of course. I would say that orca are really the ultimate predator. I think one of the things that makes orca so smart as a top predator is the fact that they cooperate. And they seem to consciously plan how they're going to attack. I was down in Antarctica and I was fortunate to see orca hunting when they were using waves to wash a seal off the ice. Right. It's on its side. No way. Oh, Jesus. Four of them. Oh. Oh, there. There it goes. I was 21 years old when I first saw orca up close and personal, swimming with them and I used to live at a marine laboratory that was right on the coast and somebody yelled out orca as they went past. I grabbed them and ran down to the beach and there were other scientists standing there um, making fun of me going ar, 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 and, you know pretending like oh you're gonna get eaten because you're gonna look like a seal. So I just got in the water and swam out to them and I had one of them come right up to me and she had something in her mouth and I thought it was a sack and it turned out to be part of a uh, ray. And at that time, that was pretty much the first evidence that we had of them feeding on stingrays. And their repertoire in terms of the different types of prey they eat as a species is huge. That's where we believe the name killer whale comes from, that they kill whales. I mean, they eat other predators for breakfast. They eat sharks for breakfast. There's never been a record of anybody in the wild being eaten by an orca. That's part to do with their culture. You know, they haven't been taught to eat humans, so therefore they don't eat humans. It doesn't mean that it won't happen in the future, but certainly for now, it hasn't happened. I was approached by the American government shortly after the death of Dawn Branshaw, who was killed by Tilikim the orca who appears in Blackfish. Orange County Sheriff's Office. And they wanted to know how dangerous is it to swim with orca. And I basically told them that, you know, I swim with these animals in the wild all the time. And I know of no records in the wild of orca attacking humans. But we do know in captivity that there's been four deaths. There is a minimum of 100 attacks that we know of. Now, most of those attacks have been recorded during show times. dream about orca most nights and in one of them I'm swimming with the orca and flying underwater barrel rolling through the kelp and there were orca all around me and and I was asking them questions because of course in dreams you can do things like that and I was asking them you know, what, what's this name, and what's the name for this, and how do I say that in orca? And I knew it all. It was just brilliant. And then I woke up, and was like right there, you know how you get that thing that's just on the tip of your tongue and I was like, I know exactly how to say that in orca. But I was awake and I couldn't remember.
So someone over here had a comment or a question, but yeah? If there's a blocking net blocking the sea yeah. and an orca doesn't see it, they, they might get caught. They oh, do get caught. And, and, the, and their fins yeah. might chop up. Exactly, from, from fishing line. Um, Steve, we've had a call at this orca in the harbour. Okay, where are they there? Uh, right up by Tinapai. So okay, how many animals are there? No idea at this stage. A fisherman had seen it and had seen rope trailing off its tail. Orca base, orca base, this is GoPro team. Do you copy, Terry? Orca base, go ahead. Yes, 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 no, and it's hard to tell how many because I've been going in a circle. Yep, roger that, thanks. Roger, we have little copied. Because I know that there's, there it is. There's really no words that describe what it's like to save an orca's life. I have saved a human's life. Fifteen years later, I had this knock on the door. The guy and his wife were right there. One of the most powerful things that I've ever done There's one orca that we rescued, and his name is Ben. When I get in the water, he'll swim right up next to me and sort of get this feeling that there's somebody there, and you turn around and here's this face right there, and he's just peeking over. I mean, here you have this sentient being, this animal that's self-aware that, that looks you right in the eye. If there was such a thing as coming back in another life, I would want to come back as an orca. If somebody asked me, what do the orca think about me? Um, you know, as a scientist, you have to say that the animals don't recognise you. Hello, Ria. Hey, sweetie. You having good fun at the beach? Yeah. But they certainly seem to be fascinated with us. 
And I find it really sad that we as humans abuse that. I think I have to look at my life's work with the orca as two separate tracks. One is working with the wild orca and the other one is advocating for those that are in captivity. Yes? Um, what does it? Captivity. Aww. Captivity means that they're, that they're kept in a box, in a tank, just like this. She's, so she's not in the open ocean, she's in an aquarium. The whole world's knowledge about these animals has changed in, in my academic career. And I, I think that it's really important paradigm shift for the general public as well. And I'm hoping that before the end of my academic career, we'll no longer have them in captivity because we'll really understand them a lot better. And the idea would be to use the platform that we've established with Free Willy, Keiko, and how he was taken from captivity and rehabilitated. And, and we want to take that concept and expand on it. It's not a difficult concept if you think about something like a, a sanctuary. You get moved into the sea pen where there's fish swimming past and, and all of these environmental conditions are changing. And that already helps activate their mind because you can imagine if you're locked in a, in a concrete box all your life and you've got nothing to do, you, can, you don't even have a picture painted on the wall. All those normal things that they would experience in the marine environment that they don't have in a tank and you teach them to follow boats and you go further each day and to the point where you're actually staying out overnight on the boats and you're going further and further and faster and faster with them. You train them to hunt for fish again and then you're there for them when they start socialising with other whales and dolphins so that if they're not comfortable with it, they can come back to you for comfort and then when they're ready, they can go back again out into the wild. And it could take months or even years but I think we owe it to these animals to try and, and give them the respect that they deserve. Hi, hi. Ingrid? Hi, Uncle William. It's nice to see the way that kids think. <laughs> that generation is going to be the generation that's going to protect the orca in the future. If I could give the kids that I teach one message, that would be don't buy a ticket to go and see whales and dolphins in captivity. Passing on the water's edge and wrinkling some time you set your mind on moving along pacing forth with padless breath Oh